Hello and welcome to episode eight of Throwing Your Parents Under the Bus podcast. I'm Jane Johnson and with me today you'll find our usual suspects, veteran crash investigator Mike Peel and our enrichment researcher Natasha. How are you guys doing? I'm doing great. Doing great as well. Awesome. Well, for those of you who, are, who maybe haven't uh, heard us before, I want to tell you that over the past 14 years, our Drive Safe Ride Safe team has accumulated thousands of observations from our driver ed students who have sent us their stories, questions, and insights um, that we, they have observed while experiencing real life driving situations as part of our driver ed course. It's a mouthful, I know. But we recently realized that these observations might also be able to help other students prepare to drive on today's chaotic roads. So on today's episode, we want to discuss the junk in your trunk. So I'm going to go right now to Natasha, who pulls through our enrichment observations to see what she has for us today. Natasha? Yes. Oh, thank you. As we know, Mike likes to teach our students about how to properly check your vehicle before hitting the road. He is all about the pre-drive routine, checking tires, oil, and all that jazz. To illustrate the importance of checking the trunk, Mike had a student open his to show what should and shouldn't be there. As the student lifted the trunk, everyone was surprised to find a massive pile of items stuffed in there old sports equipment, a half-eaten pizza box, and even a garden gnome. It turned out that the student's dad had been using the trunk as a storage space for years, and the students had never thought to clean it out. Mike, do you remember trying to keep a straight face and saying, well, it's good to know your trunk can double as a time capsule? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's still hard to keep a straight face on that one. So, um, you know, we... Why do we look into a trunk? It 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 makes no sense to the to let's just say to the naked eye out there. What the heck would a driving instructor tell somebody to go look in the trunk for? But if you are a passenger in the in the back seat, you better pay attention to what I have to say. So rear end accidents, getting hit from behind, is the number one accident we have. People follow too close and they don't pay attention, so you get rear-ended. So if you, we can't get into how your car is made to crumple in sections, but your car has to be hit exactly in your bumper to do what the safety features want. Well, if you get hit by a taller vehicle than your car, where you're up here over the bumper, what happens to a trunk? Well, your trunk is nothing but a big air pocket. And when you don't hit all the, what they call the unibody, it's, it's, the, it's the frame that collapses and absorbs energy as the car is crushing, so it doesn't crush you. When you override that and get above that bumper, your trunk becomes nothing more than a balloon that crushes. All right? So before we go any farther, let's just talk. I mean, this dad had everything in this trunk from probably the last 30 years. And then as he opened the trunk, I think he just stuffed more in it. And he took away all the air pockets. So there's nothing to come collapse. So all that stuff is moving into the back seat. But let's just us in the 21st century talk about what we put in our trunks and why it should concern you. So first of all, what do we put in our trunks? Golf clubs, lacrosse sticks, uh, baseball bats, tennis rackets, garden equipment, hockey sticks band instruments, beach chairs. Just think of all the stuff that we actually throw in our trunk. Okay, now these are projectiles hidden inside an air pocket that we don't even know about. If your car gets rear-ended, I want you to just look at cars that are on tow trucks that have been rear-ended, and I want you to look at where the trunk is. The trunk is pushed up right to their back window. So that means everything in that trunk move forward. And if any of those are projectiles sitting in the back, pointed at the back seats, they're going right through that back seat. There is no protection on that back seat. It's nothing but a spring and cloth and foam. 
and whatever is in that trunk and it collapses will go straight. So when you sit in that back seat, and you should always do this anyway, even as a driver, because if you got a long projectile stuff in there, uh, for instance, uh, I'll just say our driver's ed parking poles are five feet tall. So I have to put one seat down to get the poles to fit in the in the, the back end the correct way. Well, if you are the right side passenger, which would be me, the driving instructor, if I put them in straight and we get rear-ended, you're going to be speared by three half-inch parking poles. So you always put them in at an angle so nothing can go straight into whatever uh, seat is sitting there. So golf clubs got to sit straight in. Uh, baseball bats, nothing gets pointed towards the occupants in the back seat. So you as a passenger, you need to really open the trunk to see. Because once again, we talk about this all the time. Wouldn't it be great if we knew the, the 30 seconds before we were going to crash? Wouldn't it be nice to know that? Okay, we're going to crash in 30 seconds. Let's do all the things that we're supposed to do. Get ready for the crash. Doesn't happen that way. So, and you know as well as I know, when you look in that rearview mirror and you see somebody flying up behind you and you think you're going to get rear-ended, there's no time to say, oh my gosh, the baseball bats are pointed at us. Ouch. So pay attention to your trunk. It'll save your life. Actually, it will save your passenger's life someday. You know, it's something that we don't even think about. Mm -mm. Um, your trunk, unless I'm opening it to put groceries in or, or suitcases or something. But daily, I don't. And a lot of people have, you know, even umbrellas and things. Just, oh, yeah. you know, and instead of putting them vertical, need to put them horizontal. Um, so at least they'll just flatten that way versus be a spear. Right. Yeah, and then people, I, I mean, I can take this so much farther too. And just remember when that back seat bows towards the front seat, I want you to also know that you are locked into that seat with a seatbelt. So you, the body, are not moving, <laughs> but everything else is coming forward. And it's not its not a pretty sight, you know, when you just think of, oh my gosh. So that's how did, great. Yeah. How, did you, how did Joey die? Oh, an umbrella went through him. Oh, geez. No, yeah. no it's horrible. <laughs> Don't hear those things either, no, to be honest. And no. so people aren't even aware probably of this um, particular danger. Mm -hmm. That's why we have ride safe in the drive safe logo. Right. <laughs> right. I guess that's all we have for today. And we want to thank you for joining us. And of course, please check out our website or subscribe um, to us our YouTube channel or email us with your story or ideas on topics you'd like to discuss. And you can find our text below with the links to our different platforms. Until next time, remember to drive, drive safe, safe and ride safe. safe. That was pretty good. Was I pretty thought that good. was good. <laughs> All right. Until next time, have a great week.